better way to wrap up Women's History Month with saluting and celebrating the poets and authors of Sisters Across Oceans. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Today, on the last day of Women's History Month, Sister Power's special guests include Sandra Sims, Carla Brundage, Apia Cora, and Brittany Queens. Welcome to Sister Power. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. This is great. Yeah, this is fun. You know, this is our second Sisters Across Oceans, and I'm so glad we have one, the founder here that helped put it together. But I want to go, look, everyone, this is Sisters Power first. We have people from women from Ghana. This is exciting. It's very exciting. <laughs> Apia Kaur and Brittany, I want to start with you, Apia Kaur. What is a warm greeting in your language? Well, I have several languages. So I'm going to say it in my mother's tongue, Miawezo. And that, that's Eve. The language is called Eve. It's spelled E-W-E, -E, but pronounced Eve. And it means you are welcome, Miawezo. <laughs> Mahalo. Brittany. Yes, so I would say Akwaba, also in my mother tongue, which is tree. And it's spelled T W I. Akwaba simply means welcome. <laughs> Well, aloha and welcome, Queens. You know, I'm going to start with Carla. You know, I, I just love the book, Sisters Across Oceans here. I always say it's a feel-good book. So, Carla, can you share a bit about the West Oakland to West Africa was founded? Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us, um, Sharon. I'm so honored to be here. I, um, so briefly, I was living in Cote d'Ivoire teaching English uh, when my principal, Daphne Muse, actually encouraged us to attend the African International Schools Association Conference, the ASA Conference. And I met uh, Sir Black there. He's the co-founder of Ahala Casa. And basically after a few years of planning, we launched our first exchange. Um, I was going to Mills at the time and I, it was part of this community engagement fellowship. But what I did not know was the impact the exchange would have on all the participants. And after the exchange, with the support of Pacific Raven Press, we published our first book, uh, Spirits Carry Our Voices. And then we traveled to Ghana and we participated in a poetry slam. Uh, we also went to Cape Coast and Elmina where we visited the slave dungeons. And this was such a powerful moment for us all. All the participants, um, except maybe one, were black and the power of that return to our ancestors forever changed us. <laughs> Yeah, it's just been beautiful. And we've been going ever since. And that's what led to the um, eventual connection with the links in Hawaii and our um, Sisters Across Ocean Exchange. Wow. So, you know, Sandra, tell me about your experience and how did this impact you? Well, this was, oh, thanks, Sharon. This was such a powerful um, moment for us when uh, Carla brought the project to us along with her, with her mother, Dr. Catherine Takara, you know, who's a retired professor here. We were really, really excited about doing it. And so what she uh, got us to do was to uh, have a series of poetry workshops. Now I write, my background is law, but I didn't, hadn't written poetry before. So she led us through a series of um poetry workshops to help us to begin that writing experience. And for me, it was really, really um, poignant because at the time uh, I had recently, you know, as you probably know, my husband had passed away and some of the topics that she had us to talk about helped to address um, some of what I was going through at that time. And in fact, you know, the ones that I wrote really talked about that time. So it was it was a it was a fantastic experience, a very moving experience for all of us that participated. And then to have the exchange with our sisters in Ghana, ah, just icing on the cake, icing on the cake. It was wonderful. It was oh. a wonderful experience. 
Now that's good to hear. But P Court, what was the exchange like for you? Like I mean, we started this exchange in March 2021, and this was just about a year since we had officially been going through COVID in Ghana. And so there wasn't much happening on the poetry scene. Um, of course, it was International Women's Month as well, but women weren't meeting. We, could, we couldn't do much together. So to have something like this happen at that time, and as I'm sure you've realized by now, were women who span different ages, different generations. And it was just an experience of learning, um, not just culturally, but even from that perspective, um, speaking to, to women who had gone through life and experienced things that I hadn't experienced personally. Um, but then also the vulnerability and doing it the way women know how to do it, mm -hmm. putting everything aside. It was just a beautiful experience. And then being able to tap into ourselves and write. I mean, we wrote about so many different things that we didn't even realize we, we, we had within us, you know. Um, I think one of the pieces that stood out for me the most was when we were asked to just focus on a powerful Black woman in our lives. And this woman could be someone living or someone who's left us. And that was a powerful experience for me because then I started thinking about my grandmother yes. and it just took me back to a time where you know I didn't even know I could go. So that's the kind of beauty and the kind of power that this exchange has brought our way. And you know, I would do it over and over again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I can't wait for the, second, wonderful. For the, the yes. second book. So, Brittany, what did you learn about Black America and Black American women and culture? Through the exchange, I really found out that there was a great connection with Black American women and culture. Because when we first brought together, I think I was the youngest. And I didn't know how it was going to be being the youngest person in the space. But I realized that it was all about love because I didn't see myself being that young person. I could relate with everything that went on during the workshop. Well, you know, it's about always keeping a fresh approach. You know, you have your season and then you have your freshness too. And so I, I'm loving this collaboration. So Carla, I'm gonna to come to you. What does the title of the book represent? Oh, the, the title of the book represents the exchange itself, Sisters Across Oceans. There are two oceans um, to be crossed from Hawaii to Ghana, crossing the Pacific and then crossing the Atlantic. Or if you go the other way, it's the Indian and the Atlantic. So it's really a huge journey. And I think Black women, um, African-American women in Hawaii feel that distance. And so to be able to connect with women in Ghana, um, I feel was pr was profoundly healing for for all of us. Oh, I like that, Sandra. How did you get along with your partner? Tell me about that experience. Oh, my partner was delightful. She was actually a um, a poet. She was considered, and as Brittany has alluded, she was considerably younger than me. In fact, she was the same age as one of my daughters. But she had written uh, several um, books of poetry in, in Ghana. And uh, we used the method, um, the, that Renshi method, where you write one poem and then the person takes the last line and begins their next poem with that. So we had an opportunity to do some shared experiences. Up here, of course, mentioned about the powerful women that we were going to write about. And as it turns out, you know, certainly I, I, we all somehow got back to our own ancestors. Apia Kaur mentioned her grandmother. Uh, my partner, uh, Memsi, she mentioned her grandmother as well as being the powerful woman that she was writing about. And I wrote about my mother, of course. And that was an interesting thing because when she started off talking about writing about powerful women that influenced you. I guess the traditional notion is you think about, you know, some, you know, some celebrity type or some woman in history, but 
that we were all able to draw from our own cultural and ancestral experiences with women in our own circles who had provided such wonderful uh, influences and stories and um, exchanges for us was was an expression in and of itself to me. That was quite powerful to realize that we all had that connection to, to really inspiring and powerful ancestors of our own. I'm loving that cool. the story. That was really cool. Yeah, I'm loving that. Appeal Corps, I want to come to you. That beautiful, fiery red hair. <laughs> Tell my sister viewers about your work with Ghana writers. Oh, you know, in our part of the world, I mean, and I mean, it's not a history lesson tonight. Maybe on another day we can go through that. But there was a time when writing was so powerful, especially with a political voice and certain political times. We went through a series of military rules, you know, or military eras before we got to the Fourth Republic, which brought us to democracy. So during that time, writers were so powerful and their voices were silenced. Now, there's a gap between people who we'd call the literary sages in Ghana and people like Brittany and I and Sir Black, who Carla mentioned, who are writing now in contemporary times. And it's a great time to write because we have a voice, we have the freedom to write, we have the freedom to express ourselves. But it's also a great time to write because there's so many interesting influences from around the world. So we can share authentic voices, but we can also tap into those things that we're experiencing, be it through social media or any other form of media really, or through exchanges like we, we've done and that we're celebrating tonight. But the biggest thing for me is the fact that, um, you know, we're able to work with a lot of young writers and help them find their voices and help them see that, uh, you know, it's not just about creating beautiful art or things that can end up on a shelf and be sold and then you make good money from it. But it's about sharing yourself and giving voices to people who don't have voices, especially women, through our own voices. And so it's been a very powerful um, you know, time for me working with, with young writers, the, post, the Poetry Association of Ghana, uh, going through a halakasa, which, um, you know, runs all these slams. And now the, some of the best poetry slammers are women. And, and that yeah. has been a great empowering time for us as well. Yeah. Oh, I'm loving that. It's all about motivating, educating, and empowering one another. That's what it's all about. So Carla, what do you love most? about these exchanges? I actually want to respond a little bit to something Apia Kaur just said in this okay. answer. Um, when I first met Sir Black, he said, I'm choosing poetry to reach our youth because, and I'm quoting him. So he said, because we've lost our culture. All the young people want to be rappers. And I'm like, that's hilarious because in America, we're trying to teach all of our rappers that they come from the African spoken word tradition. And so that was an inspiration of this exchange was to, to kind of tap into both of our core mission of helping young people learn about our histories and our connections. And so I love that. And then I'll just quickly say the other thing I love are the friendships I've made. I've made so many amazing friends um, from all the exchanges. So I just wanted to say that. Oh, uh, how about you, Sandra? Tell me a little bit more about your experience. Oh, as I said, it was, it was, it was quite a powerful thing. I remember the first Saturday that we actually connected with our, you know, with our Ghana partners. Uh, there was obviously a significant time difference. We were meeting at, uh, at, I think it was like seven in the morning. We had to meet very early and they were meeting at, you know, seven in the evening. And I mean, I remember that moment of when we actually got that connection and, we were going to be actually communicating. It was just, I, I, I got, I got chicken skin just thinking about the fact that we were going to be connecting with these amazing, powerful women in Ghana to talk about our poems, to share our, our, our poems. And Carla and, uh, and uh, Catherine did such a wonderful job of, you know, kind of keeping us all in line, at least so it would go smoothly. 
but it was such a wonderful moment uh, to see that we had so much in common. Uh, first off, that was, you know, we have these powerful connections with our experiences, even though we're thousands of miles apart. The things that we valued about our ancestors, our ancestors, and particularly our our mothers and grandmothers. That just that just stuck with me too as well. That so many of these these were the these were the women who who you know gave us uh, such inspiration. And of course, you know, someone like Brittany was <laughs> it was just really really exciting and it's such a powerful moment. And uh, I, I am looking forward to the next one as well. But since you did bring that up, Brittany, I just got a message that um, someone said you may be ready to read one of your poems to us very quickly. Are you ready for Mama She Is or what is I Love? Which one are you going to read? Um, I'll start with I Love. Thank you. Uh, it goes. I love this poem that you sent me about love. I love the way that you see love. And I love the way that you love. Love to me is a man, is woman, is child, is she or her, is he or him. Love to me is us. And we are all an expression of God's love. To me, love is a picture in my heart. Love is a song I sing word for word. Love is a poem I can recite from the inside. Love is this art that I create. To me, love is a road I know so well. Love is a book I read over and over again. Love is a movie I have watched more than thrice. Love is this very poem I'm writing. Love is this very moment I'm sharing with you. I love that. I always tell people on the show, thank you so much, Mahalo Nui Loa, that there are five words I don't think we use enough. And it's that uh, I love you and thank you. You know, I think if more people heard that, the world would just be such a better place. But I want to come to Apicor right now. And I, I see on Instagram, you are very active in TV, radio, and even with international relations. What exciting happenings should we be on the lookout for? Huh. So... I mean, one of the biggest things that's happening at the moment is the fact that, and since we're talking about writing and we spoke a little bit about poetry earlier, after five years of fighting and just keeping the fire burning, the Poetry Association of Ghana has been incorporated officially as an association under the laws of Ghana. And it's taken so long because when we started on this journey, uh, the Registrar General's office in Ghana didn't know how to register us. They didn't know if we were just a club or just a group of young people who were youthfully exuberant. They really didn't know how to classify us. And then we had had so many poets doing things on their own and there's so many movements and we needed to find a way to end for Ghanaian poets. No, but I was just saying that, yes, <laughs> since we've officially incorporated the Poetry Associ Association of Ghana, um, you can look out for lots of poetry. There are um, lots of women in the group. And again, I mean, I can't speak about women enough because we're, we're beautiful women here tonight. Um, but just the beautiful things that women are doing, are writing about and you know, the things that they're actually rising up against that nobody wants to speak about and they're putting their voices to. And I think you should really look out for that. Amen, I totally agree. And, and the same is here. I mean, we can talk about what uh, um, the Judge Katanji Brown Jackson is going through. You know, we could talk about that all day, and we're going to talk about that later on Sister Parr in April. But I want to come to um, retired Judge Sandra Sims. Can you, will, will there be upcoming projects? Yes, in fact, for those of you that are here in uh, Honolulu on June the 5th, is that June the 5th or June the 4th, Carla? 
June the 4th, this Saturday, June the 4th, at the Downtown Arts Center, um, we're going to be having a reading session of Sisters Across the Oceans, and uh, it's going to be really, really uh, fun. We're going to have a connection to uh, meet with our sisters in Ghana. It's open to the public. It's free. It's free. <laughs> there will be refreshments uh, and uh, an opportunity to purchase the book if you want. And I think we'll also have an opportunity to meet our the artist for the cover, who's also one of the poets, uh, Kim Keyes, who created the artwork for the cover of Sisters Across Oceans. Hopefully, we may have an opportunity to, oh, yes, she did a wonderful job. And we may have an opportunity to share some of that as well. So we're looking forward to, you know, really getting together with, with uh, the members of our communities. And you have a chance to meet some of the poets and do an exchange there. So it's, uh, I forgot what time is it, Carla? Is 10? No. Five to seven. It's five to seven. Five to seven. So it's Saturday, June the 4th from five to seven at the Downtown Arts Center in Chinatown in Honolulu. So come. It's free. It's free. I'll see everyone there. <laughs> Brittany, I want to come back to you before I go to Carla. Tell us about your foundation that provides women's hygiene prod products and education to women in need. Yeah, yes. Uh, I founded a foundation, the Brittany Tachi Foundation. I began operations in 2021, January 2021, but this is something that I've always wanted to do when I was, when I was in SHS, but didn't really get the chance to, so I completed SHS and entered university. So with my foundation, we basically do crowdfunding to buy hygiene products for women, which is sanitary pads. And our first female all women project was on World Menstrual Health and Hygiene Day 2021. I had just organized another event. So running this event, I almost thought it was nearly impossible, but I got a lot of support. And I think one of my greatest contributors and donors were uh, Esti Makeda. So I got a lot of support. And then within two weeks, we were able to mobilize the funds to get uh, sanitary pads for the women. And we were able to donate to 500 Kayaes in Accra Central. When I say Kayaes, it means headquarters. When you come to Ghana market, you see a lot of women who help you carry your stuff. So you see them with their pants on their head. And we were able to donate 500 to over 500 of them. And so this year, we're also running our second event on menstrual health hygiene. And it's supposed to take place on the 28th of May this year. But this year, instead of doing it in Accra, where we plan on taking it outside Accra to the Northern region. Yeah, so this year we're also looking at a much, a much sustainable program, which is that would give about 100 underprivileged girls one year's free supply of sanitary pads. So for the whole year, they would be covered with women products. That's what we intend to do this year. That's wonderful. Thank you. I love hearing about that. Thank you so much. But before we close out, Carla, I just want you to, in, in 30 seconds or less, um, tell our system power viewers, what is the value of this type of project? The value of this project really um, are the healing that comes from connecting the connections themselves that people make and the ability to sustain those connections and to move forward. As Brittany just shared, she has connected with Mama Makita, who has now, they have a lasting um, connection around this new foundation she started. And I'm just hoping more and more connections that are sustainable, that uplift us all as women and as black women and as black people um, will continue. I like that. A P chord. Tell us something about Ghana that we have not discussed. I just, that's a place I want to go. I have outfits from Ghana, but I've never been there. Well, Ghana is a place to be at the moment. <laughs> you know, it, just before COVID hit, so late 2019, our president, um, His Excellency Nane Kufuado, actually initiated the year of return. And of course, 2019 oh, yeah. marked 
yes, marked 400 years since um, you know the the first slave ships left the the coast of Ghana and of many parts of Africa as well. So we've had an influx of people just repatriating from different parts of the diaspora to come and take their places back at home. Now, one of the the beautiful things I'll talk about very quickly is that the Diaspora Africa Forum, which is headed by Ambassador Erica Bennett here in Ghana, is doing a lot of work to make sure that when people come back to Ghana to the motherland. And they are not just coming to grope around in the dark, but they have a home, they have a, an effective institution that's helping them to settle. And great news, a few a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago, we got to launch the Africa flag. So now the diaspora is officially the sixth region of Africa. And so we have a flag that represents that. And it was so beautiful to see people come from all over the world, all over the continent to launch that flag and just for us to reclaim our power. And this is being led by a black woman. So <laughs> yes, yeah, so that that's you know something amazing and it's happening in Ghana. And I, I hope to see all of you, even if you don't move to the motherland, but you know, just come spend some more time here and claim your space and your place because this is where you belong. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Look for Sisters Empowering Hawaii for sure. And Sister Power, Queens, Carla, Sandra, Apiakoi, Brittany, thank you so much for your wisdom. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.